Ladies and gentlemen, this is your favorite dungeon dweller, and you're watching Pillar to Post. I am your host, Pete Wall, and tonight, tonight's July 12th, 2017, and it was NXT, and this is your NXT report. Now, we had a bit of a slower night going tonight. We only had three matches. One... I'm kind of sorry about it, but I fell asleep through it a little bit because it just bored the fuck out of me. That doesn't happen too much in NXT for me, but it was the women's match. It was a uh, match to decide who was going to be going to the Mae Young Classic. We had that match going for us. Top of the match, we had the debut of Bobby Fish, but he had to take on Aleister Black. And in the main event of the evening, we had the Authors of Pain, Occam and Razor, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Heavy Machinery, Otis Dochevic, and Tucker Knight. And that, that is what we're going to discuss tonight. But first, let's give a shout-out to the sponsors here on Pillar to Post. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial with this uh, link right here. AudibleTrial.com backslash Pillar to Post. Now they have over 200,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Like I've told you guys, every night I do this show, you can take it anywhere you please. Long drives, camping, fishing, you name it, it's there for you to use. Here's the kicker, however. If you don't want to stick out the 30-day free membership, it's not a must-have. Okay? You get your free audio book, and if you feel like canceling it, fine. You cancel, and you keep your audio book. Okay? But, I implore you, use that link. AudibleTrial.com backslash Pillar to Post. Because Every time a new subscriber uses that link and gets a download, that is help for this channel and myself. So take advantage of that link. Also, Grapple Merch. You visit grapple.bigcartel.com and when using this code pillar to post 77 at the checkout area, when you've done your shopping, you receive a discount courtesy of Pillar to Post and Grapple Merch. Now they have items such as t-shirts, autographed photos, WWE Elite wrestling figures, and you can also order the Grapple Box. This month is uh, Grapple Box number four. Now I'm waiting for mine, I'm itching to get a hold of it, and uh, we'll see where that goes. I want to do the unveiling, the unboxing right here on Pillar to Post because there are sponsors here. Why not do an unboxing for them and show off what you can get? Like, hell, sometimes you're getting two autographed photos of WWE superstars. You know, it can be anyone from, anyone from the past or the present, such as AJ Styles. Or, you know, never know, uh, an old one like such as the Rockers or something. You never know what you're going to get. So that is Grapple Merch. So check out the links below. I've got them there for you. Both sponsors, Audible, as well as Grapple Merch. Now, as always, there's my Teespring store, as well as my Circle of Steel store at uh, teespring.com. Those links are in the description below. My Facebook merchandise page, my Facebook author page, as well as if you want to send me a friend request and connect with me on Facebook, those links are there for you. Now... If you want to help support the channel, you can help support it as low as $1 a month. You can visit my Patreon page, and that is patreon.com backslash pillar to post. And like I said, there are rewards if you want to pledge higher than a dollar, but it is a dollar a month. That is it. My Twitter, at pillar to post 77, and my email for ordering Circle of Steel merchandise, the new uh, brand coming up at you is Big Dog Wrestling. There is a new one coming out for you. 
and the very first one is going to Tyler Black. He was our 200th uh, subscriber draw winner. So he gets the very first one, the original, uh, or I should say the very first Big Dog Wrestling t-shirt. Um, and then there is the Pillar to Post brand. That is coming at you as well as, as always, Circle of Steel. And I want to let you guys in. You guys have been requesting bandanas. I've got a line coming very soon. I'm actually having them made as we speak. They are going to be black. That is one selection. And then there's going to be red. And they are going to be featuring all three brands. Pillar to Post, Big Dog Wrestling, as well as Circle of Steel. So those coming very soon. I will keep you updated as always. Whenever there's a new line out, I always bring it to you on the channel right here. So let's get in with NXT. Now, we started the show off with Aleister Black coming at you and the debut of Bobby Fish. Now, we've all been waiting for Bobby Fish to make his debut. We weren't sure when it was going to be, and I haven't been staying up to date on all the news and rumors in WWE as of late, so I do apologize for that. Those... Uh, podcasts will be coming back to the channel very soon. I'm just trying to get play a little bit of catch up here on Pillar to Post with the Big Dog brand. And once I'm all caught up there, I can guarantee you we're going to have news and rumors back here and uh, keep you up to date with what's going on behind the scenes in WWE. So, my thoughts on this first match. Alistair Black versus the debut of Bobby Fish. Um, I, I want to be honest with you. It was a very slow match, but there was a reason for it. These guys are known for their striking abilities. So it's going to be a slow match because they gotta they got to tell their story in this match. How they both have to outsmart and outthink their opponent. And if they don't do that, they're going to they're gonna end up paying for it in a big way. Now, it can be a kick upside the head or a punch in the mouth. Either one, not a good damn thing when you're in there with another striker. And we got to see Aleister Black being tested today. He got tested more than we have seen him as of late. Um, his biggest match to this date, up to this point, was um, Cassius Ono. And it was a pretty damn good match there. But this one, this one was a more calculated match. This one, they really had to think things through how they were going to work it. And Bobby Fish really took it to Aleister Black tonight. So let's get in with the match, give you the details if you missed NXT, and uh, we'll move on. So Black and Fish both attempt leg kicks. Fish and Black are trying to feel each other out. The crowd, for the most part, very silent. Uh, Black locks in an arm bar, Fish rolls out of it, Fish misses a head kick, and after a tackle uh, drop down spot, Fish hits the ropes, and Black uh, sits cross, crisscross in the ring, like his, you know, his meditation pose. Fish tries to take Black's head off with a kick, but Black just drops himself backwards to avoid the kick before kipping up. Black levels Fish with a savat kick to the chest. And after another lockup, Fish grabs a side headlock. Now Fish lands a strike flurry that ends with a pump kick to the chest. Black responds with a, a Muay Thai combo that ends with a running knee. Fish rolls out of the ring to collect himself. Black springboard backflips into the ring, in, back into his meditation pose. And tries to suplex Fish into the ring when Fish climbs up on the apron, but Fish counters with a knee to the top of the head. Now Fish uh, puts Black in a sleeper hold on the apron. Fish breaks the hold at the referee's request, then sweeps Black's legs. Black tumbles to the mat, and after a short break, we come back and Fish flattens Black with a senton atomico for a near fall. Basically, Senton Atomico, if you don't know what it is, you are grabbing the top of the rope and you are flipping yourself over the top rope, landing with your shoulders on top of your opponent's ribs. So, it gets a near fall out of that one. 
Fish catches a kick from Black, kicks Black in the thigh repeatedly, and then Fish snaps uh, Black over with a dragon screw leg whip. Fish works over Black's legs once again, and Black tries to fire up with a, but Fish locks in another sleeper. Black drives Fish into the corner. Fish releases the hold, but immediately locks it back in. Black drives Fish into the corner again. Fish boots Black in the chest. Black responds with a kick, excuse me, a sick high kick, or a high knee, I should say. And Fish grabs Black and hits an exploder into the corner for another two count. Fish slaps Black in the back of the head and tells him to come on. Black is seething at this point, and as would I, someone smacking me in the back of the head, I'd fucking tool him like a fucking idiot. Now, like I said, he slaps him in the back of the head, tells him, come on, Black, seething at this point. Fish comes back, hip checks him, and yells for Black to come on once again. Black gets up and knocks Fish down with repeated roundhouse kicks, running knee to the face to by Black, and Fish looks out. Okay, Fish looks out. Black uh, leads Fish back into his feet with his foot. Now, if you've ever seen this done, he's got his opponent down on the mat, and you'll pick him up with his foot by the chin. Black obliterates him with his black mass kick. Beautiful ending. Your winner of the match, Alistair Black. Like When it comes to a striking match, when there's two strikers like this, and you're thinking it's going to be fast-paced, it's going to move, move, move. No, you're thinking about cruiserweights, and I'm talking about real cruiserweights. When it's two strikers in the ring, it is slow, it is calculated, and they are telling you their story. They're telling you their story of how much training they've been put they've put in and how they're going to win the match. And it isn't going to be by a DDT, it isn't going to be by a suplex, a jackhammer. It's going to be with what he calls the black mass kick. That is a kick to the head. He's going to level you. He's going to roll you up. And get the one, two, three, the match is done. And that's what a good striking match is all about. They did a great show with that match right there. Now, after that, we get some footage of Hideo Itami and Cassius Ono arguing about whose fault it was they lost their tag team match. And mainly, it was uh, Hideo Itami blaming Cassius Ono. Itami says some, everything is Ono's fault. Ono, frustrated beyond belief with Atami's actions as of late, tells him to stop blaming everyone else for his problems. Ono says he is all about action, and it's time that he gets back to doing that. And I can't blame him for that. Uh, they showed a clip of last week them losing their tag team match together, and these two have had their issues already with one another. Um, now... Cassius Ono got taken out of the match with a kick to the head. Atami ended up having to finish the match on his own. And came up short. So automatically, yes, it was Ono's fault. Just like it was Ono's fault he didn't beat Bobby Roode at the last takeover. You know, it, it's everyone else's fault but Atami's. So Cassius Ono let him know today. You can keep on blaming everyone. We're tired of hearing it. Gonna get to the point. Or I'm going to punch you in the mouth. Basically said there. Up next we get the May Young Classic qualifying match with Vanessa Bourne versus Jamie Hatchie. Jamie Hatchie is very new to NXT. I believe it was her debut on NXT television. Um, and like I said, I'm sorry, but I fell asleep through this match. It frankly bored the hell out of me. I caught glimpses here and there, but it was a hell of a time to keep my eyes open and wanting to see that main event because I could have fell right asleep through this whole damn like half of the show just because of this match here. These women just did not bring anything exciting to the table. So, Hatchy Floor is born with a shoulder block. Hatchy tries a sunset flip, but Bourne counters and hits a kick to Hatchy's spine. Hatchy surprises Bourne with a sidewalk slam. Bourne hits a spin outside slam for the win. Winner of the match, 
Vanessa Bourne. Yes, I made it really short, but frankly, it sucked balls. So Vanessa Bourne moves on to the Mae Young Classic. That is something I'm waiting to see. I want to see women wrestling. I want to see women wrestling well. I don't want to see them doing stuff like we've seen on NXT tonight. So last week, Sanity attacks Drew McIntyre in the parking lot. The backstage, NXT Commissioner William Regal tells NXT Champion Bobby Roode his next challenger will be Killian Dane or Drew McIntyre. Roode suggests that they make some money by having McIntyre fight Dane first. Regal books the match for next week. It's going to be a number one contenders match. Huge match. And I believe I can see McIntyre going on to face Re uh, Rude. Absolutely no doubt about it. And I want to see that match. We get an in-ring segment with uh, Johnny Gargano. He makes his return after the beatdown from TakeOver. Where his tag team partner Tommaso Ciampa whooped the shit out of him after they lost their ladder match against the Authors of Pain for the tag team titles. Gargano thanks the NXT Universe for being in his corner. Gargano says he never saw Ciampa's betrayal coming. Goes on to say he is moving on. He is looking forward to the future. He goes on to say that uh, he needs to get back to being in this ring doing what he loves. He has to be at TakeOver Brooklyn. He has to get back to being Johnny Gargano. More importantly... He needs to get back to being Johnny Wrestling. And everybody wants to see Johnny Gargano get back to being Johnny Wrestling. Very exciting man to watch in the ring. He can throw an excellent match and leave you entertained every damn time. And finally, we are in our NXT main event of the evening. And it's for the NXT Tag Team Titles. It will be the champions, authors of pain, with Paul Ellering in their corner, defending their titles against Otis Dochevic and Tucker Knight. They are known as Heavy Machinery. And you know what? I love both of these teams. I wouldn't have cared either way which way this match went. We knew it was going to be a bit of a slower match because they're two teams of really big, heavy dudes. So you knew right there it wasn't going to be fast-paced. It wasn't going to be uh, flips and spins and vaulting over the top rope. It was going to be blunt force trauma. And that's what we got. It was a great match between these two. And I want to see these two come back at each other when Tucker Knight and Otis Dochevic have a little bit more time under their belt as a tag team. And then... Then I want to see these guys take on the uh, Authors of Pain. And then I want to see them whoop some real fucking ass. So, Akam and Knight tussle with each other until Akam uh, catches Knight with a back elbow. Knight turns the tables and traps Akam in the corner. Knight hits multiple corner clotheslines. Akam eventually gets an elbow up, which stuns Knight long enough for Akam to tag in Razor. Knight stumbles back into his corner, tags in Dochevic. Dochevic and Razor go nose to nose. Razor hits the ropes for a clothesline. Dochevic doesn't budge a damn inch. And this guy is good, head and shoulders shorter than uh, Razor is. And Razor is one big fucking dude, man. Razor hits the ropes and Dochevic runs him over uh, following that. Akam and Knight get in the ring and there is a stare down between both of the teams. We go to a commercial break, but when we come back, Akam and Razor are taking turns beating down Tucker Knight in the corner. Knight tries to fire up, but Akam drops him with a knee. Razor tags in and puts Knight in a sleeper. Knight tries to fight back, but the AOP hit a backbreaker flying stomp combo for a near fall. Razor hits the ropes, but Knight blasts him with a clothesline. Both of them down and out on the mat. Dochevic and Akam finally make the tag. Dochevic runs over Akam with multiple clotheslines. Dochevic tosses Razor across the ring 
with an overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, where were we? Um, let's see. Okay. Razor suplex. Knight clotheslines Razor out of the ring. Dochevic body slams Akam. Then slams Knight on Akam. Akam tr kicks out. Heavy Machinery tries to set up their finish, but Razor cuts it off. The Authors of Pain hit the last chapter on Dochevic for the win. Still, your NXT Tag Team Champions, the Authors of Pain. But it wasn't over, folks. After the match, the three members of Sanity, known as uh, Alexander Wolf, Killian Dane, and Nikki Cross come walking out on stage. They look up and papers begin to fall from the ceiling. Or the rafters, I should say. Ends up being the pages from Ellering's Book of Dominance. And it is Sanity's notice that they are ready to face the authors of pain. And that should be a fucking awesome battle. But that was it for your NXT tonight. This has been your NXT report here on Pillar to Post. I want to thank everyone for joining me. If you are a new uh, viewer, please hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. As always, hit that thumbs up. Hit the little bell. It gives you notifications every time I upload. And I want to give a shout out to all my big dogs. And I want to let you know that this week we didn't have the fantasy booking, but it will be coming back next week. We're going to have some fun again. Let you guys book your own matches against your favorite wrestlers or your most hated wrestlers. And going to have some fun with it next week. This week, I'm playing catch up. I want to get everything ready for uh, Big Dog Wrestling this weekend, starting at Friday, 6 p.m. We go all the way to Sunday, and that is Friday Fight Night, the Saturday Night Special, and Suicide Sunday. It is off the hook. So, you guys join me then. And I am going to get to work on building up Big Dog Wrestling once again. Getting all the entrances done and everything. And uh, see where that leads me tonight. You guys, I'll see you guys very soon. Have a good one.